As the worship leader said, today's message title is Christ and the Silver Trumpets from Numbers chapter 10, verse 1 to 10. As I was reading these uh, verses, I was like, oh, how am I going to preach on these verses? Uh, shall I talk about trumpets? Bop, bop, bop. <laughs> That's made of silver. Uh, I was getting nowhere at first, but then I remembered uh, one of our members, a uh, member from our church, said that the silver trumpets represented Jesus Christ. That gave me an idea. Wait a minute. It makes perfect sense. When did they use these trumpets? For assembling. They used it uh, to assemble uh, the leaders or, or the uh, whole people of Israel. They used it for, uh, they used them for marching. Uh, they used them for battles so that uh, God would remember them. And they used it for festivals and feasts. Makes perfect sense because when we assemble, when we gather together, we are gathering together in the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew 18.20 For where two or three gather in my name, there am I with them. So this morning, we are gathering, not in my name, not, not in the name of our church, although uh, church name is important, but we are gathering in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and because we are gathering in His name, Jesus Christ is with us right now. And we are also marching in the name of Jesus Christ. Where are we marching towards? Uh, we are marching towards the ends of the world, um, uh, so to speak. Uh, we, we are marching towards world evangelization. And we're going to conquer the world, not with force, uh, with, but with the gospel in the name of Jesus Christ. And we are fighting in the name of Jesus Christ. I wish there were no fighting in this world, but uh, we see acts of terrorism a lot. Uh, and, but uh, what's more important is the spiritual battle that's going on constantly. Of course, we are on the winning side, and we all know how it's going to end, right? Um, but we're in the process of fighting. Like I said, I wish there was no fighting, but there is that spiritual battle. That's what the Bible says, isn't it? Uh, Ephesians chapter 6, as well as other verses in the New Testament. But we fight in the name of Jesus Christ. We are not relying on any method. Uh, but the only method we have is Jesus Christ. If He is the method. I remember uh, a professor at Fuller Seminary. Uh, that's where I graduated from. That's where I received uh, my degree. Well, at seminary, there was this uh, professor, and I loved him a lot. You know, I, uh, I really, really respected him, but uh, he teaches about spiritual battle. And the way he teaches is that you got to put those evil spirits, you got to lock them in the box and send that box to... Um, to the feet of Jesus Christ. Because if you don't, then they will come back. They will come back to you or they will come back to other people that you're, you are ministering to. And you know what? Uh, that's, he actually makes us do that. In order to receive the credit and the grade, you have to go through, uh, I forgot what 
what we called it, but maybe it was practicum, but we actually have to spend hours uh, practicing what he taught us. And uh, yes, we practiced it to each other, uh, to other students, and uh, inter interestingly enough, uh, people were being freed uh, from their whatever problems. Uh, but the method we used was to lock those evil spirits in the box and send the box to the feet of Jesus Christ. Uh, but um, as you can tell, the method is the box, right? Because the name of Jesus Christ is not enough. That's how we were taught. Why don't the name of Jesus Christ work? Like in the New Testament, because uh, you got to be more scientific. And God re revealed uh, this spiritual science to us. And that science is that you got to lock those evil spirits in the box and send it to Jesus Christ. Otherwise, they will come back. Uh, it made sense, and actually we were seeing the results every week. Throughout the whole quarter, we were seeing the results. Uh, but the problem was, it didn't work on me. The professor uh, did it on me. He practiced, it. He practiced what he preached, <laughs> and he did it on me. didn't work on me. Right. First, first of all, he didn't even know what my problems were. I, sh um, I shared a lot of things about myself. Uh, but he still didn't know what my real problems were. I didn't know what my real problems were. And years later, uh, I had a serious, serious problem. And I almost... I think I almost died. <laughs> but all to say that if there is a method, then that method is only Christ. It's not the box. It's no other way. But only Christ. And how did I regain my health? How was my life restored? In the name of Jesus Christ. In no other name, no other method, but only in the Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, and evil spirits, they will do all kinds of things so that you will rely on other methods, so that you will use other methods. Those are all lies and tricks of the enemy. I remember uh, telling my parents, uh, I think this was back in 2005, I, I told my parents I had a fierce battle with Satan, the devil himself, and I won. I'm so great. No, I didn't say that part, but <laughs> that's what I thought inside. I'm so great, and I don't ever need to fight this battle again because the battle had been won. Um, but that in itself was a deception, and I didn't know that. But I was just getting from bad to worse, so everybody knew that uh, that <laughs> I was in deep trouble. But when my parents prayed for three years, every single day, in the name of Jesus Christ, I, I regained my health. And here I am. So we fight in the name of who? Jesus Christ and only Christ. We worship in the name of Christ. Uh, I, say, I, I say this all the time. What is legalism? What is legalism? It's relying on your works. Uh, you come before God relying on your own works. That worship is not acceptable. God's not, God's not going to receive that worship. And I talk about mysticism all the time, don't I? What is mysticism? It's relying on your experiences, your spiritual experiences. Well, I, I feel that electricity flowing through my body right now. This is a great worship. This worship is alive. 
this is a spiritual worship. No, that's actually a very fleshly worship. <laughs> because you are, uh, you know, you are feeling that uh, electricity that's flowing your body, that's flowing through your body. Uh, and uh, so it's fleshly, right? It's your feelings. It's your body that's, that's going through that experience. So it's a fleshly worship. Uh, what kind of worship is acceptable to God? Uh, the Bible says that God seeks uh, worshipers who worship in the Spirit and in truth. How can we worship in the Spirit and in truth? Only through Jesus Christ. John fourteen six. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we can only come before God and worship Him in the name of Jesus Christ. Because He is the truth. Uh, so we go on to number three. Uniqueness, not diversity. Among us, diversity is a good thing. Right? Um, you know, races... Racists, they don't <laughs> like diversity, do they? Right? We have no racists here. But, uh, when we deny diversity among us, then there's only uh, strife. There's no peace. There's, uh, there, there are fights. There's hatred. So diversity is a good thing among us. But in the spiritual realm, it's not about diversity. It's about uniqueness. How can you enter into the spiritual realm? That realm is unseen. It's invisible. Uh, there's no telling um, which is true and which is not. The only way you could enter into the spiritual realm is through Jesus Christ. If you enter the spiritual realm through other means, then you're going to be deceived by the forces of darkness. I said forces of darkness because it says so in uh, Colossians 1. But, you know, if you're in darkness, you don't know where you're going. And you don't know what's right in front of you, right? Let's say uh, I'm in darkness. Somebody turned off the lights, so I'm in darkness, and hey, what is this? What is this? Oh, it's a box. It feels like a box, right? Somebody turn, turns on the light, and you know what? It was a Bible. So it's like that. You enter into the spiritual realm, and you're like, wow, I never knew there was such a thing, right? You're experiencing all kinds of spiritual things, and uh, what you ex experience uh, may come true in your real life. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, I used to read the number plates. Uh, you know, cars, they have number plates, and I used to read the number plates, right? And... Uh, DWP is uh, uh, do it with uh, do it with a preacher. <laughs> Sounds silly, right? Even stupid, but you know what? I was uh, reading all those number plates, and I came up. I came uh, up with a message which said that my parents, because they were so bad, I knew it. I knew they were so bad ever since I was little. <laughs> my parents were so bad that they were going to get into a car accident right and that was the message that I got right from those beings whatever those beings were and you know what my parents did get into a car accident in two weeks they almost died and those kind of things happened a lot it, it happened all the time so I was like see See how spiritual I am, right? See how powerful I am. <laughs> um, but you know what? Uh, those are all deceptions, lies of the enemy, 
uh, they are called the forces of darkness for a good reason. They will trap you in the darkness so that you will know you will not know what's going on. You're not even going to know what just happened. You're not going to know what got you, right? But praise God, uh, when I, well, when the light of Jesus Christ has shown in my life, uh, I came back to my senses and I realized what was going on. And I realized the only way you could enter into the spiritual realm is Christ and only Christ. If you enter into the spiritual realm through other methods, and believe me, there, there are many, many other channels and ways you could experience spiritual things. But if you do that, if you rely on other methods and ways, uh, you're going to be in darkness, and uh, you're not going to know what got you. So, in the spiritual realm, it's all about uniqueness, not diversity. Some people don't even believe in the spiritual realm, but there is that spiritual realm. God is spirit. Holy Spirit is spirit, obviously. <laughs> Uh, there are angels, and angels are spirits. There are evil spirits, and obviously they are spirits. Kingdom of God, heaven, that's a spiritual realm. You can't see the kingdom of God. That's why Jesus said, uh, kingdom of God, you can't say the kingdom of God is here or there. No. But the kingdom of God is in you. If if you believe that Jesus is the Christ, then the kingdom of God is in you. So some people deny the spiritual realm, but there is that spiritual realm. The only way you could be victorious in the spiritual realm is only in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you know, there are two kingdoms, there are only two kingdoms in the spiritual realm. Kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. Only two realms, only two dominions, according to the word of God. You can only see that when the light of Jesus Christ shines in your life. Only in the name of Jesus Christ, the forces of darkness crumble, they fall apart. And only in the name of Christ, the world will be evangelized. Every first Sunday is the Evangelism Sunday. And we don't go out in the field. We don't go out uh, to our family members, relatives, or friends uh, relying on other methods, relying on other names, but only in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the only way the whole world will be evangelized. Conclusion. When there are no answers, Christ is the only answer. Christ is the answer, that's correct. But, Christ is the only answer. So if you are in a dire uh, situation, uh, great. Well, uh, no offense, but <laughs> great. Uh, it's a great opportunity great opportunity for you to experience the power of Jesus Christ. Sometimes I pray for my body like uh, I, I remember praying for my athlete's foot, uh, athlete's foot <laughs> in the name of Jesus Christ. It didn't work for some reason. Uh, so uh, I bought some uh, medication at Rite Aid or maybe it was uh, CVS but I bought a medication and I applied it and uh, uh, my athlete's uh, foot was gone right <laughs> but sometimes uh, it's, it's not the athlete's foot that's causing you a problem it's not uh, your 
cold or flu that's giving you trouble. It's that serious problem, that serious uh, trouble. Uh, sometimes it's matter of life or death, like in my case, right? I was out of control, going everywhere, here and there, everywhere, causing a trouble, hurting people. Those, those were my dark days. Uh, I almost got killed a few times. As you know, I, I crashed my car into a concrete wall, right? I almost killed myself. So I was in that kind of situation back in those days, right? What can, what can help me? What can help me? How do you want to see doctors? Uh, I didn't want to see, I didn't want to go to hospital, right? I was very angry, I was very violent, even had my own gun. <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you that I actually used it. I just told you, didn't I? Ah! <laughs> But my parents kept praying for me day after day, month after month, for years. One day I came back to my senses. And uh, not only I uh, recovered my health, but I started helping other people, right? And people are coming alive. Um, so praise God. All glory to God. It wasn't my parents, but it was the name of Jesus Christ that saved me. And it's not me that's helping other people, uh, even saving other people. It's the name of Jesus Christ. Just two weeks ago, uh, a brother who lives in San Diego, uh, he was in a very, <laughs> very bad situation, but um, something happened to him. I've been praying for the past praying for him for the past two years. His mom has been playing my CD every morning, right? One day he came back to his senses. I'm not saying it was me. I'm not saying it was my CDs, my messages, but all my messages talk about Jesus Christ and it was Jesus Christ. It warned me. All glory to God, all glory to Jesus Christ. I met him yesterday. I had a great time with him. He actually came to our church once uh, about three weeks ago. But That's the power of the name of Jesus Christ. He was going around causing uh, trouble. And he had a couple of business and uh, he wasn't helping at all. They were losing money because of him. He had uh, he. He, uh, him and his mom actually uh, owned three businesses and because of him, they lost a lot of money, right? But uh, he's not working, he's not working anymore, praise God. That, no offense, by the way, if you're listening. <laughs> he's not, they're not losing money because of him at least, <laughs> so that's, that's a good thing. I hope he works again though. <laughs> he recovers his health and works again, but... Uh, you know, I got a lot of stories to tell, but uh, I got to talk about the Word of God, Word of God, don't I? Right? I can't be spending all my time uh, sharing all these stories. But one, once in a while, or every other week, <laughs> I, would like, I would like to share these stories. So there's power in the name of Jesus Christ, and He is mighty to save. He's mighty to save not just our spirits, souls, and bodies, but also uh, from our problems, troubles, challenges, sicknesses, and illness, illnesses. So let's continue to pray for people who are struggling with uh, finances, with different kinds of challenges, uh, with sicknesses. Let's continue to pray for them. And... Uh, but never forget that we, we are fighting for victory 
or from victory? From victory, yeah. I, I heard you, so <laughs> from victory. <laughs> so uh, God bless all of you, and uh, let's enjoy that victory throughout this week. Let me pray. Father God, thank you uh, that Christ is the silver trumpet for all of us. Uh, let us shout victory throughout this week in His name. I pray this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.